I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Uh, please join me in standing. Mr. Kidd is going to lead us in the invocation and Mr. Hubert in the pledges. Uh, if you would like to, uh, please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for loving us. Lord, thank you for our country and the freedoms that we enjoy in, in this week of uh, recognizing past presidents. Lord, we just pray specifically for our our leaders, Lord, the leaders of our country, the leaders of our state, the leaders of our community. Lord, we pray for our student leaders and uh, continue and be with them and guide them, whether it's in cheerleading competition and music competition, in the lunchroom, in the classroom. Just be with them as they influence and impact others. Lord, just be with all of our students and we just ask for your, uh, wrap your arms around them in safety. Just. Uh, be with us tonight, guide and direct us, and uh, just help us have a productive and a, and, a, and a good meeting, and just uh, watch over us tonight and watch every, over everyone as we travel home. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Please join me in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you all for being with us tonight. Uh, we have a couple of wonderful special district recognitions, so we're going to start off with uh, special district recognition UIL 6A Band Dance Cheerleading State Champions, Oak Ridge High School Cheerleading Team, Dr. Stockton. I'll ask Tommy Johnson, Principal Oak Ridge High School, to come to the podium and introduce our first ever uh, cheerleading state champions. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it is my pleasure to introduce our head cheerleading coach, Sarah Parker, along with the national champion cheerleaders from Oak Ridge High School. Sarah has been a teacher at Oak Ridge since 2006, teaching English, photojournalism, and yearbook classes. She's been our head cheer coach for the last seven years. In addition to being a teacher and a coach, Sarah is the mom of three great kids. And under her leadership, the Oak Ridge cheer team has won several times, but this is the team's first national champion. As a coach, Sarah's focus is not only on football and competitions, but teaching girls the importance of community service and character. She expects excellence on and off the field. Coach Parker. Um, thank you so much for inviting myself and my assistant and my team here. Um, it was a great honor and pleasure to represent Oak Ridge and Connor ISD at the state level. Uh, we weren't done there. Uh, this past weekend we went to the national level and competed there and won championships. Um, we competed against the 6A winner and the 5A winner at the state level, so uh, we were gunning and we ended up um, doing exactly what we came to do. Um, these girls are excellent members of our community, um, not just on the field or on a competition map, but in the classroom. All of our seniors have received um, letters of acceptance from several colleges. It's just determining where they're going to go. Uh, many of them are members of the Honor Society. Uh, we do great work outside of school. We just found out um, yesterday that we are ranked top 10 teams to raise money for St. Jude Hospital again. This will be our sixth year. Um, this year we totaled um, over $16,000 of just raising money for, for the St. Jude Hospital. So um, I think um, that these girls and my assistant coach deserve a great round of applause for being not just great on the field, but also in the community and the classrooms. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to call each one of you up so you can come shake some hands. Amanda Wynn. Oh, what's uh, Mr. Coach Weibel? Coach Weibel. Yeah. 
You just keep going? Okay. Um, Amanda Wynn. Grace Blatney. Ashley Greenig. <laughs> Ali Alvarado. Destiny Clark. Laurel Lofton. Katie Lutza. Nicole Abison. Hannah Anderson. JC Gartner. Bree Stunda. Charlie Uber. Brooke Hertzenberg. Amaya Bolanos. Lanisha Taylor, Maddie Gubser, Shelby Henry, Maddie Prince, Sammy Havman, Abby Rowe, Cameron Ganados, Skylar Carroll, Emily Knowles, Cheyenne Parker, Dayon Acosta, Jamie Derringer, Brittany Harvey, Tori Green, Lanisha Taylor, Bailey Moss, Kimberly Knight, and Ashley Jordan. Young, lady, young ladies, uh, real quick, on behalf of the board and Dr. Stockton, uh, we would just like to congratulate you. State titles are awesome. They are not easy to come by. We know how much hard work it took. We congratulate you on your effort. But what we found out is, in the audience tonight, is how, much, how many other things that you've been successful at. And your spirit of giving back to the community is unbelievable. So we congratulate you on being fine young ladies as well as great cheerleaders. Congratulations. All right, our next item on the agenda is special district recognition 2017 Texas Music Educators Association All State, Dr. Stockton. Well, for our, our next uh, introduction, I'll ask Dr. Horton to come up, our coordinator of fine arts, who's going to introduce our, our very talented and hardworking uh, recipients. Good evening. On behalf of the 300 fine arts teachers who impact nearly 60,000 students of CISD, I want to thank you as a board first for your constant support of the arts. Conroe ISD is recognized at the state and national level, as you have heard earlier this evening, and certainly as evidence with these young people we're about to introduce, as a leader in the arts. And this is largely due to your commitment to a well-rounded education, which includes high-quality arts experiences. So thank you. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, thank you for giving recognition to the 24 students named 2017 TMEA All-State Musicians from Conroe ISD. A brief word of explanation about the All-State process. It is a competitive process that begins throughout the state in auditions hosted by 33 TMEA regions. Individual musicians perform selected music for a panel of judges 
who rank each instrument or voice part from this ranking, a select group of musicians advances from their region to compete against musicians from the other regions at eight area competitions. The highest ranking musicians judged at the TMA area competitions qualify to perform in a TMA all-state group. These students participate in three days of rehearsals directed by nationally recognized conductors during the TMA clinic and convention, which was just um, a week and a half ago. Their performances for thousands of attendees bring this extraordinary event to a close. Over 1,700 students are selected through this process that begins from over 68,000 students statewide uh, vying for the honor to perform in one of the all-state bands, choirs, or orchestras. Less than 3% of the musicians who initially audition become all-state musicians, and tonight I'm very proud to introduce 24 of these students from our own school district. Most school districts in the state of Texas don't have an all-stater. Some have not had one in 15 years. We consistently have multiple every year. We're so proud of these students. And at this time, I'd like to invite them to come over and line up against the wall. You saw it happen before. <laughs> and, and then they're going to come forward in just a moment uh, as I call their name. But while they are lining up, I'd like to take a moment to thank and recognize their outstanding teachers who are here tonight to support these students and who have guided them through this process to become all-state musicians. So I'll introduce them um, by school and <coughs> discipline represented here tonight from CHS Choir, Clay West and Emily Eisterhold from Oak Ridge High School Choir, and y'all can remain standing till all names have been called. <laughs> Carla Summers, J.R. Smith from uh, Oak Ridge Band, Dana Prater Band, Albert Vela, Gerald Dillard. From College Park Choir, Aaron Bodane and Katie McCravey. From College Park Band, Charlotte Royal, Jeff Goring, Rob Savala, and College Park Orchestra, Dr. Peter Kempter. From the Woodlands High School Choir, Patrick Newcomb, Kelly Martin and Stephanie Biffle, and from the Woodlands High School Band, Joni Perez, Andy Salmon, Kyle Witte, and Jason Harvey. Thank you, teachers, for what you have done. <laughs> it is an honor to welcome these students forward. So we'll begin with uh, Allstate cello, Chris Chan. <laughs> By the way, Chris is in the ninth grade. <laughs> Our All State Band students, Ben Bowman. Amruta Murti. Kelly Orlando. <laughs> Al Schaefer. Nathan Stanfield. Wait, wait. Brandon Wiley. Another uh, fun thing to note is Brandon was the first chair clarinetist of all the entire state of Texas. Matthew Winningham. Wait. <laughs> Jason Wolf. And <laughs> 
They just need a drum beat to march them out. Okay. So, our all state choir students, Miranda Adcock. Jaden Archie. Alan Boudreaux. <laughs> Rachel Bradfute. <laughs> Paige DeJarnet. Derek Eugenio. <laughs> Susan Falconer. <laughs> Barsha Iyer. Shelby Steele. <laughs> Katie Stoby. <laughs> Kayla Swan. <laughs> Brandon Beasy. Kellen Werner. <laughs> Kyler West. <laughs> and Hannah Will. I want to thank you so much. Uh, just a quick, uh, how many of you began working on your Allstate music last year before the school year ended? <laughs> and they started this process in auditions in September. So it is a long and very um, rigorous journey and we are so, so proud of them. Thank you. On behalf of the board, we'd just like to say congratulations once again. As a musician, I appreciate and understand the hard work that goes into this. Uh, it's a reflection on your dedication, um, not only just to music, but in, but in everything that you do in life. Um, and let me uh, just give you some words of encouragement. Music helped me go to college. I didn't make a career out of it. Some of you may, um, but it's still something I do every day. It paved the way for me to go to college, and I still play music every day. It's still a big part of me. If you pay attention to any trends in schools, you notice that several years now the, uh, the emphasis has been on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And a lot of uh, districts now are adding the A back into that and going from STEM to STEAM because they understand. <laughs> Because they understand the importance that arts plays in producing well-rounded citizens and good, um, good students. So again, congratulations, Dr. Horton, and, and all the fine arts teachers in the district. Uh, this is much uh, a reflection on you and the job that you do. So thank you to all of you and the parents that support these young men and women. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Mrs. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes. All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure, at the lowest administrative level, a prompt and equitable solution resolution to complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint a representative to present their views on to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who is signed up to address the board. Uh, Christy Swoboda. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. My name is Christy Swoboda, and I'm here to speak about instructional paraprofessional pay and CISD. Before I became a para, I was employed by the district as a substitute. My last assignment was as a long-term tutor at Bosman Intermediate, where I am now employed. I was doing basically the same thing as I am now, pulling small groups for help with math or reading. Oh wait, I forgot. When I was a sub, I did not have breakfast duty. Try getting 300 grumpy, sleep-deprived fifth and sixth graders to start the day with a smile. <laughs> as a long-term, non-certified substitute, I was making $100 a day, Tuesday through Thursday, and $110 a day, Monday and Friday. I now make less than $90 a day. My last paycheck was $673.10. Thank goodness I had one year of experience as a clinic aide from November of 2007, or it would have been lower. My basic deductions, TRS, Medicare, etc., are $128.09. My balance after deductions is $526.95. I am one of the lucky ones. If I were to take the district health and dental plan in addition to my vision deduct deduction, I would clear $22.95. A friend is a PE para in the district and she says she never even checks the for a deposit from the district since she makes so little after insurance is taken out. I have another friend who has 29 years of experience as a special ed paraprofessional and she makes less than $25,000 a year. To me, this is unacceptable. The humanitarian of the year for my campus is a bilingual paraprofessional with 15 years of experience. These paras help classroom teachers pull small groups and individual students in need of help and do testing. Some of the paras take care of response to intervention on their campuses. This entails identified, pulling identified groups to work on math and reading skills, either on the computer, using manipulatives, drills, and checking progress in math, 
or using the LLI reading system. These pairs are responsible for entering the critical data into the computer and giving feedback so that teachers and administrators can determine if the student is making <coughs> progress and can return to the classroom or if the student needs more time in RTI or if testing for dyslexia or special ed are needed. The special ed pairs go everywhere with their students, including PE and fine arts. We only have a 30 minute lunch break each day. The pairs worry about their students just like a teacher. I still check in with the sixth graders that, whose class I was in last year to see how they're doing. All of us help with clubs on our campuses and some of us are in charge of them. If you have a line on discounted Pokemon cards, my husband would really appreciate it because every Friday my Pokemon club gets Pokemon cards from me. <laughs> As a taxpayer, I appreciate your diligence in keeping the tax rate low. However, I respectfully request the board take a look at an increase in paraprofessional pay. We make less than one third the starting salary of a teacher, but add much more than just another adult in a classroom when we walk through the door. I know you're facing a tough legislative system right now and that things are all up in the air, but please consider your employees. Thank you for your time this evening. If you have any questions, I'm at Bosman Intermediate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Swoboda. Um, if no one objects, I'd like to move item 4A up uh, to before the consent agenda. Um, that is to name the Director of Assessment, Evaluation, Accountability, and School Improvement. Dr. Stockton. Okay, it's my pleasure uh, to recommend to you the, um, just as you said, the Director of Assessment, Evaluation, Accountability, and School Improvement. And I'm very, let me look through the audience, I'm very pleased to recommend Dr. Tamika Taylor, who's currently the Principal of Travis Intermediate School. Right. I move we approve that uh, recommendation. Second. <laughs> All right. All those in favor, or discussion, sorry. <laughs> all right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> Any opposed? All right. Thank you. <laughs> to Dr. Stockton, the Board of Trustees, and President Bush. I was a little worried that we would have a discussion, uh, Dr. Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> but since we don't, I would like to take this time to really thank you for having faith in me and entrusting me with such an honor of serving in this position for this fine school district. Since 2005, it has truly been an honor to serve in various roles in the Conroe Independent School District. Starting my venture at Ryan Elementary, which my Ryan family is with me tonight, Dr. Upshaw, Dr. Hubert, and Sharon Henry, thank you so much. Starting my venture on that campus in 2005 has opened up so many doors. I knew that when I walked through the doors of that school and the principal was running around like a chicken with her head cut off with no shoes on, <laughs> I knew that this was the place for me. And I ventured on to complete my journey at Travis Intermediate where my family is with me tonight, my Travis family. <laughs> Thank you so much. It has been an excursion that I have wholeheartedly embraced. I have learned from so many great role models, have grown as a professional, have grown as a leader, and have gained valuable relationships that I will never forget. I am looking forward to this next journey and chapter in CISD. I vow to leave a legacy, be tenacious, work hard, and embrace the endearing vision that has already been set for such a great district. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. President Bush, if I may have just a quick Please. moment. <clears throat> Dr. Taylor, um, I, I must say just on a, a personal level, um, you know, my children have benefited from your efforts in this district. Uh, I've watched your career over the last several years, and to say that we're proud of you would be a, a gross understatement. Um, 
I would say I would be lying if I, I didn't say that I had mixed feelings about this because we're going to miss you at the campus <laughs> level for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the things that you've done at the campuses you've served um, have been phenomenal, and we are honored to see you in this position. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have the consent agenda. I have had a request to remove item M from the consent agenda. Uh, anybody have anything else they need to remove? All right, so uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, uh, consent agenda minus item M? So moved. All right. Second. All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right. Consent agenda minus item M passes. Item M, consider approval of the interlocal agreement with the City of Conroe for the purchase and installation of flashing school speed limit signs. Um, Mr. Hubert, you asked for this item to be held out. Yeah, yeah. I know you had some questions about it, so. Just just a few. Thank you. Thank you, President Bush. President Bush, like this. <laughs> uh, just a couple quick questions. So I was looking at it. Um, Dr. Stockton, should I direct my questions to you? Is that sure, okay? Sure, and if, if uh, Chris worked on it, so we may tag team this. Okay, very good. <clears throat> so it was. it's a $40,000. Is that is that our part? And what all does it, does that cover installation, the purchase of the equipment. You want to come to the podium? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Uh, basically, this is an item that uh, the city approached us after the fiscal year started, so we really hadn't had the advantage of budgeting for this item, but uh, they were interested in trying to do more with flashing lights out there. And so flashing lights go on city right away. Um, and so um, and we have them in several locations around the district, but not everywhere. And so. Uh, they roughly cost about eleven thousand dollars for a pair. They usually come facing each way, um, and so this is a um, an opportunity to work with the city to increase the presence of the flashing lights. Where um, we we kind of work together to identify some priorities. It's not a hundred percent of everywhere we want to be. I think we'll come back next year and see if they want to continue, and we'll finish it out for the city of Conroe. Okay, so these are brand new. Mm -hmm. They're not replacing anything. These are brand new. And so are we then required for any maintenance for them later on? They maintain them. So we would, we would go in with them to help purchase the items, and then they install them and maintain them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Hines, I have a question that, since you, you, brought, uh, you brought up a good point. So not every school within the district has flashing lights. That's correct. So what is the criteria for having them versus not having them? There's, there's really not a set criteria for okay. a long time. Anywhere that there's a TxDOT maintained highway, they installed them. So the TxDOT puts them in. We have them in several locations because they're on TxDOT roads. And Chief, if I'm saying anything wrong, just correct me. But um, <laughs> the TxDOT roads typically have them. And then over the years, we've had um, projects where we've either seen increased speed limits or uh, commercial traffic increase we try to work in and again it's not we don't install them so we have to work with the local entity to see if they're interested in putting them in usually that involves a traffic study and some engineering and, um, and so we work with either we've done the precinct three we've done them uh, precinct two really all over the district we've had some we put one in when Kirkendall went through uh, we worked at, on that project at Mitchell so yeah it were by Mitchell uh, we added one out in, on Fish Creek thoroughfare uh, a year ago because of the traffic and the speed. So it's it's on an ongoing basis that we're always evaluating. We put one in by uh, Woodlands Ninth Grade Center a few years ago because of the traffic going through. And um, a few years ago, we had a project with the Woodlands that went together to pay for the ones on research by Woodlands High School and Powell. So we've had different projects, different ways over the years that we've done it. Um, and it, it, it's hit and miss in terms of um, sometimes we'll put it on one street. For example, the one for Conroe High School, we already have one on 105. These are for Longmire, placement on Longmire. So it's going to vary uh, as we kind of look at where the needs are and the city wanted to expand the presence of it. And it seems like a good good deal for us in terms of matching instead of paying for all of it. Some, one other thing. Um, the contract said that we need to make payment within 30 days, I believe, of approval. When will they be installed? Do we know? I, I understand. Do we understand it? Is we're, we're basically we pay the 40,000 to the city, but we don't we don't have any control over when they go up. Do you know when they'll actually be installed? 
in, in, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I know we talked about it, and it would be fairly quickly. Um, but I, I, I'll be honest, I don't remember like a date. Um, I know it will take them a while to install them because they'll have a crew go. I'm just curious yeah. where they are in the process of. Well, like, and I know what, they've already, they their city council already approved it. So um, that part's already going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. All right. <clears throat> I move them. I move. I move the passage of item in. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. Um, item 5A, select um, construction manager at risk for the additions and renovations to Austin Elementary School project and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the construction manager at risk contract. Dr. Stock. Okay, Mr. Foster, would you come present that item, please? Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the selection of a construction manager at risk for our Austin Elementary School project, which is additions and renovations at Austin Elementary School. If you recall, in November of 2015, our Board of Trustees selected IBI as the architect for this project. Since then, IBI has published a request for qualifications for the construction manager at risk. We had three companies respond to our construction manager at risk, RFQ. We invited all three to participate in the second step of our two-step process, which is pricing and interviews. After the interviews, GTT was selected as the offeror submitted the proposal that we determined to be the best value for the school district. We've made our ranking evaluations a part of this item, uh, so it'll be approved as well. At this point, we are requesting your approval of this selection. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Dollar amount of the project again? We've estimated the budget at $15 million. 15 mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. All those in favor? Raise. No opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Uh, item B, capital improvement update. Mr. Foster, please. All right. This time I'd like to bring you up to speed on our capital improvements that we have up underway throughout the district. I'm going to start with the College Park High School, uh, where we're doing a, an addition for the robotics program. Uh, this project is, is tentative on schedule. Uh, rain and, and other weather issues have, have had a, a big impact on our critical path progress. Uh, right now we're working to get the building envelope dry so that we can continue work on the inside. Uh, the project is scheduled to turn over in March, uh, so we're anticipating the inside interior of the building being ready for March. Uh, it doesn't really look like it from the pictures, but the inside is not terribly complicated. So once the building's dry, we should be able to get it ready for furniture and things uh, pretty close to what our schedule anticipated. And pardon me, when you say March, you mean after spring break, correct? Uh, we're shooting for furniture deliveries uh, during spring break. Okay. Uh, but for students to come in there and be able to use it, it will, like, in all likelihood, to be perfectly honest, probably be after spring break. Okay. Moving on to our network operations center. This is the technology infrastructure for the district. Uh, you're looking at the courtyard at this building where we're housing the, the exterior air conditioning and cooling equipment for our network operations center. Uh, this project is on schedule. Uh, we anticipate I mean, there's a lots of moving parts and complicated uh, coordination to get our systems transferred from where they currently are to the new facility. Uh, you're looking at here a photograph of two of the four interior cooling units for the new network data equipment. Uh, the project uh, also includes some offices uh, for the technology staff and some other departments uh, to fill out that end of the building. The project is scheduled to turn over uh, for full use of the district this summer. Uh, and everything appears to be on schedule. Uh, for our life cycle 2017 project, that project is underway. It was recently approved uh, by our board. Uh, the contractor has mobilized. There's not even pictures yet. So we're starting uh, at the end of this month, starting on the first roofing projects on this on this site, uh, project. And that project is doing exactly what it's supposed to do at this time and is anticipated to com be completed on schedule. At Knox Junior High and the Woodlands Transportation Center, uh, Knox Junior High is getting a 10 classroom addition and some little work <coughs> on, their, uh, on their field house. Uh, what we're looking at is the preparation of the building pad uh, for the 10 classrooms, which are science labs. Uh, the foundation work for that building is underway or actually complete at this point, uh, and that project is on schedule, scheduled to start in August when, when kids come back from the uh, summer break. Over at the Woodlands Transportation Center, we've done a lot of demolition. 
uh, and subsequently started putting things back. Uh, that project is also on schedule, uh, scheduled for use in August when the, when the students come back from the summer break. Our safety and security project, uh, we've completed phase one. Uh, our contractor and our technology staff are working together now to commission all the camera views and the burglar panels, things that we've installed over the course of the, that project. We touched uh, 16 campuses uh, with this particular project. Uh, the, some of the upgrades were uh, for Runyon, for example, were picked up in our, our life cycle uh, project from this past summer. And at Grange Land, where we did the addition there, these upgrades were picked up in that project as well. So we, overall, we touched 18 campuses over phase one. Uh, we are in the process of commissioning that now. We are bidding phase two next week where we'll, we'll uh, bring another uh, another 15 campuses or so in into this program. Lucille Bradley, uh, this elementary school is scheduled to open in August uh, when the students can come back. But well, these were will be coming to this campus for the first time the, this coming August. The project is on schedule, uh, right where we need it to be at this point. Uh, we're looking at an overall picture of the exterior of this building and we feel it is coming along nicely. Interior wise, we're starting to see finishes and other things come in. We expect permanent power and air conditioning to be on within the next 30, 45 days. Uh, so we're looking at the entrance to the library here and our, our typical classroom uh, is beginning to come together as well. And at Grand Oaks High School, again, this project is on schedule. It is scheduled to open in August of 2018. So looking at the, uh, the view here, uh, you're seeing a, an overall picture of the site. You can see the athletics portion of the project starting to move forward and come along really well. The building structure is, uh, is essentially complete. We celebrated the setting of the last beam uh, this past month, or this month, uh, at that project. So we are moving forward with the building envelope and things of that nature. So the part of the building envelope is the roof and the windows and the exterior walls, and the, the roofing is the progress you're looking at in this photo. And we're starting around the building and, and uh, one end and working our way to the other. Likewise, uh, projects like this have multiple phases. This is the ground floor. So you're seeing the ground floor of the academic wing where you're seeing the building infrastructure, the building systems, the air conditioning, the plumbing. Uh, most of that equipment is in place and being installed and commissioned as it goes through. And that is our update. Thank you, Mr. Foster. <clears throat> All right. Item 6A, financial reports, Dr. Stockton. Uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Darren Rice to come up. <laughs> um, Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice. Present that report. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of January. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. And the balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balances. Each month, we like to look at our cash and investments. And we'll concentrate here on the general fund. Uh, as you can see, we have $500 cash on hand. We have bank deposits of $234,000. We have investments in our pools of $160 million. We have other investments that are out to up to a year of 73.5 million and our investments with TCG Investment Advisors of 51 million dollars for total cash and investments of 285 million dollars. <throat> this time of year we always like to track our property tax collections and we're doing really well this year. Uh -huh. uh, I gotta give it a, a hand to the tax office. They've done a real good job this year. They've actually stayed open late to collect taxes, done a lot of good good things there. Five percent ahead of where we were last year. That equates to about $10 million we've received sooner that we're able to invest and get out there and working for us. <clears throat> the next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures. Uh, the revenues are made up of three categories. That's local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And looking at the detail of our local revenues, once again, you can see property taxes is our larger generator of revenues, $239.7 million uh, in the general fund, debt service $66 million, it's food sales and child nutrition, and premium contributions and self-funded insurance. Then we can also look at our expenditures uh, by major object of each of the funds. First look at our projected fund balance for the general fund this year. We're looking at an increase of about $5.1 million. 
y'all remember in the budget process, we had a reconciliation item in our payroll of about $3 million we're taking into account. Mm -hmm. uh, fund balance for debt service, we're looking at an increase of about $882,000. Child nutrition, a slight increase of $81,000. Uh, good news again on our self-funded insurance. Our trends are, are very positive at this time. Uh, we currently have total revenues of $18.7 million. Total expenses, $16.2 million. For revenues over expenses, $2.5 million. Uh, participation at our wellness center, still strong. We've had 2,211 visits so far this year. Uh, looking at our investments for the month, <clears throat> we ended the month at $616 million invested. Uh, the WAM of our pools is one day, and they're yielding 84 basis points. The WAM of our other investments is an investment less than a year that we control, is 148 days, and we're yielding about 1.14%. We can actually say percent now, so that's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Our longer term investments um, with uh, TCG Investment Advisors, the WAM is 549 days, and they're yielding just a little over 1%. So the wham of our combined portfolio is 61 days, yielding 91 basis points. And our benchmark, the 98 T bill, is at 50 basis points. Thank you. Any questions? I just had one question about the um, health insurance. I know this that one? this this year we're at um, I think it was 200 or two million five uh -huh. for income over revenue or expenses, but normally. At this point in the year, where we in the past yeah. we have been running negative. Yeah. At so this, at this time last year, we were about five hundred thousand to the good. Okay. And over the following months, we lost two point five million. You know, the, it, it went negative two point five right. million. Yes. Okay. So I mean, it looks like we'll you know turn out pretty good yeah, for this year. Hoping. We're we're still hoping that we'll break even for this year. I know that Correct. that's been the two years that I've been on the board. We've we've had to supplement the health insurance yeah, at the end of the year. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we were. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. All right, that uh, concludes our board meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, thank you.